In this video, we're going to cover the viewport. We're going to cover how to navigate around it and some basics of what you can do in it. Let's get started. The viewport is your view into your project. You can use your normal WASD controls like a first person shooter or most modern games to control your player in your viewport. Now by player I'm referring to this camera we're inhabiting right now for navigation purposes. Now in order to use the WASD you need to make sure you're holding down one of your two mouse buttons left or right in order to navigate. Traditionally you would hold down your right mouse button and this will give you mouse look. I can now look around everything. If I use my W, my S, my A, or my D key you'll notice I'm moving basically forward, back, left, or right. So by holding down the right mouse button and using my W, A, S, and D key, I can navigate around my scene. If I want to go up or down, I can use my E for up and Q for down key, and this will give me basically my full navigation just by using the keyboard. Remember to hold down the mouse button and so you can access those keys. If you hold down the left mouse button, you'll basically get left and right, or horizontal view only. You can still move, but you're not going to be able to look up and down because the left mouse button will restrict it to mouse look left and right only. The middle mouse button does work. It's just basically going to give you a view on a single plane, your vertical plane. So you can basically go up, down, left and right when you move the mouse, but you can't go forward or backwards unless you use the keyboard. And you can't really rotate the mouse. It's like you're moving on a flat piece of paper. There are a few other shortcuts that come in handy, and these are very useful when you're trying to get access to something specifically. So let's say, for example, we have a cube here, and I want to look at the cube. If I hit the F or frame key, it's going to go ahead and zoom in and frame on this item. Now let's say I wanted to look on the back side of this. Well, I could hold down my mouse button, and I could go around it like this, and I could look at the back side. Or you can use what are most traditionally used for navigation movement inside of model creation programs like is Maya and Max, you can use your Alt, Control, and Shift keys for modifiers. So if let's say I was to go all the way over here and I want to look at this cube and then I want to look behind it, I could hit the F key to frame, hold down my Alt key, and then use the left mouse button to rotate around the scene. And now it's basically going to pivot around the center point of the item I'm looking at. I'm holding my left mouse button and I'm looking around it. If I want to go inside or in or out, zoom in for example, now I can use my zoom button, but you'll notice the zoom is a fixed step. It's going to go forward or backwards a fixed distance. If I hold down the alt button and use my right mouse button to the left, I can zoom in or out smoothly so I can get a little bit better view. If I use the middle mouse button, it'll let me pan around like normal. So remember, F is to focus on something. Let's say we're going to focus on this item right here. Alt and the left mouse button is to rotate around. Alt and the right button is to zoom in and out. And those are really handy when you need to do something. That's actually going to cover the majority of our movement inside of the viewport. So let's go ahead and look at the viewport itself. We can resize the viewport. If you hit the F11 key, it'll bring it to full screen. And if you hit the F11 key again, it'll bring it back out of full screen. We have our options at the top where we have this drop down menu where you can th see things such as real time, statistics, our toolbar, different layouts and things like that. Real time is handy if you have a computer that has lower processing power or you just don't really want to hear your fan on your video card running full speed because the scene is updating constantly. If we look in our background, we're going to go ahead and we're going to see some clouds slowly moving. We have an animated cloud system that comes with our default scene. If we were to uncheck real time, we'll notice our clouds will now stop. They're not going to move at all. Our CPU usage and GPU for our video card usage is going to go down and everything's just going to calm down because we're not updating anything. If we were to move, our mouse, for example, I'm using my butt, I'm navigating around my scene. As I update my viewport, then things such as particles and effects and this animation in the background is going to update at the same time. 
so that's useful to keep in mind. But do remember, if you have real time shut off, you may run into an issue where you've added a particle effect and you're scratching your head wondering why your particle effect isn't running in the editor. Make sure you have real time on if you need to see real time rendering. Keep in mind though, this only matters in the editor itself. Once we hit play and we start testing, it's not going to affect that real time flag. That real time flag is only inside the editor when we are editing. Now, our other options we have here are a layout panel. By default, we have one pane for our layout. That means this right here is one single pane, one view using whatever perspective, whatever view type we've set up. We'll cover that in a second. If let's say we wanted to do a traditional 3D modeling flow or computer aided drafting flow, we could go down to four panes and it'll split it. You have your perspective and then you have like your left, front, and top views. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this back to our normal single pane layout like that. And that's what we're gonna use for the rest of our series. You can feel free to experiment and do whatever you want. A very common one is something like two panes where you have things like your top-down view or one of your other views, and then you have your perspective view itself. Let's go back to one pane, but again, feel free to experiment. Our next set of options here is our view type. Perspective is our default. One thing you'll notice is all of these have shortcuts. Almost everything has a shortcut, and if it does, it'll tell you right next to it. Like I said before, F11 was our immersive or full screen mode. Feel free to remember these and play with these. I personally just change the options by hand because I don't use them often, but if you do, shortcuts are handy. So back to these. We have our different types. Perspective is our normal viewport. It's right here. It's our perspective view. It's how you're going to traditionally look at your world. But if you're doing something more level editor intensive or you need some sort of a more finely tuned viewport you can change this to something like our top view now our top view is going to be familiar to anyone who's using a digital content creation software or computer aided it's our top down wireframe view and you can see things such as our player we have our different meshes here everything's selectable everything's movable everything's editable you're just looking at it in a top down wireframe view. now of course you can change this we can change it to a top down lit view change it to top down unlit view we can change it to our different view modes but by default when you change your view here it's going to change it to a wireframe because it assumes that's the view you're going to want and you have all your different types down here let me change this back to perspective we have our default viewport and our cinematic viewport we're not going to need to worry about that for this series but basically default is your default viewport when you're editing and nothing is going to be obstructed you're just going to see everything Cinematic is if you're using the sequencer and allows you to give you a preview of what it's going to look like inside of your animation or your sequence or your cinematic. Let's go ahead and change this back to default and perspective. Next is a quick shortcut set for all of our different view types. We have our lit mode, which means our light, for example, which let me close these down. We have our lighting, which is our light source, which basically the sun is faking down, coming down to the directional light, and it's giving us things such as shadows. We can go to unlit mode, which basically unlights the scene. Lights no longer affect, we have no shadows, none of our materials are being affected by lights, they're just basic and generic. This is useful if you don't have lights and you need to create something, which we will see later. Then you have things such as our wireframe view, Detail lighting view. This is going to let you know how much your lights are working. Lighting only. Reflections. This lets you know how reflective things are. Optimization modes. Different shader qualities and complexities. Different levels of details. The ability to see just the roughness in your scene. There are tons of options as you can see here. And the majority of these you don't need to worry about. Those are things that are used for optimization and they're covered separately. We're going to go ahead and leave this just as lit. Later on, we'll be playing with the unlit mode. Our next view, our next option is show. I would go ahead and just leave this alone for now. This is where you can view all of your different things inside your editor. And by things, I mean things. There are probably a hundred options in here that you can change on and off. 
Like for example, if we had a navigation grid in here, we could turn on the visibility on or off. We have down here our grid. This is a nice grid that's set at our zero vertical plane to let us know where our, our ground is basically in the editor. It's for visualization purposes only. But if you don't like it, you can shut it off. Show grid, not show grid. Show fog, not show fog if you have fog turned on. Things such as decals, collisions, anti-aliasing, particles, skeletal meshes, like here's my player right here. I could go and say show skeletal mesh. The player's still there, but his actual skeletal mesh is hidden. Static meshes. This is going to hide basically most of my geometry because that's built out of skeletal mesh, uh, static meshes. So that's something to keep in mind if you need to narrow down things. Our show has a ton of options and it's useful for when you're trying to edit things later and you want to see what it looks like with or without bloom, with or without eye adaption, different visual effects, things like that. We're going to ignore that for the most part in this series. Our last part is our quick changes and navigations. Now these first three are our movement or translation, rotation, and scaling of any objects we have selected. That is our tool to determine what we're going to do. That will be covered separately. This is our coordinate system. We can cycle between world space, which is a world here, and local space, which is the queue. That will be covered separately, but that's useful to know if you're having an issue where you've rotated something and now it's not moving correctly when you try to move it. You may have the wrong, the wrong coordinate space turned on. We have things such as surface snapping turned on. This will allow us to snap things when we move them to surfaces. We're not going to use that for now. We have our actual grid itself. When we move things, or is it going to snap to a grid or is it not going to snap to a grid? If it does, every one unit, every 10,000 units, whatever size we want. Then you have the same thing for snapping objects when we rotate, snapping objects when you scale, and then you have the camera movement speed itself. These things we'll cover when we get to them, but you, they're useful to know this is how you access them. This one is useful if, for example, I'm way over here. Now our movement speed right now is four, and that's the speed I'm moving at as I move my camera. Now we can use the F to frame in, which is useful, but let's say you're zoomed way out and you're going in and there's nothing to frame on or you want to move faster. Well, that's what our speed is here. You can crank it up to eight and you'll now find we are quite quick. Or for example, let's say you've zoomed in and you want to move in closer, but you're moving too fast. You can crank this down to let's say one and now you'll notice you move in extremely slow. But it's useful if maybe you're recording a cinematic and you want a little bit of a slow speed or you really want to get in and you want to check out something in this mesh but you're finding that you're accidentally zooming too far past it when you have it set to the default and it's a little difficult to move in and out, you can go ahead and adjust your camera speed. The other things on our screen are our gizmo which shows our rotation of our camera, Z being up, X being forward and Y being left and right for the most part. And it's just the rotation of the camera itself. And then whichever level we are in. Now one thing you can do with your viewport or any other tab is you can hide the actual viewport name, this tab itself, for visibility purposes. If you right click and hide tab, it will basically minimize the tab to this little triangle in the corner. It'll give you a little bit more real estate. So for example, if I was to hide these two tabs, I have a little bit more vertical space. If I need them back, I can just go ahead and click on it and it'll bring it back. That's also how you can close tabs if you've opened up extra tabs. So for example, down here, I may want to close my output, my message log. Let's go ahead and hide the content browser tab. We've cleaned it up a little bit. So this is going to wrap up the video for navigation and the viewport itself. We've learned the basics of how to move around our viewport by using the standard first person shooter controls with the W, A, S, and D keys. We've learned what most of these options do, how to change to different view modes as well as perspective modes, which will be covered in more detail later. And we've learned what each of these options do at the top, which we will actually play with in the next video. Our next video is gonna cover actually building our first room, playing with meshes, and then moving and manipulating them.